into your presence. Incline your ear to my supplication, O Lord. O Lord and God of my salvation, I cry before you day and night. Glory be to the Father and to the Son and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now and ever shall be, world without end. Amen. Let my prayer enter into your presence. Incline your ear to my supplication, O Lord. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, and the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. If you hear my voice uh, crack a little bit, just know that I have uh, allergies that come usually around this time of the year, nothing serious, and I feel great, so uh, glad to be here to celebrate this Mass uh, at our parish here. Brothers and sisters, let us acknowledge our sins, and so prepare ourselves to celebrate the sacred mysteries. I confess to Almighty God and to you, my brothers and sisters, that I have greatly sinned in my thoughts and in my words, in what I have done and what I have failed to do, through my fault, through my fault, through my most grievous fault. Therefore, I ask, Blessed Mary, ever virgin, all the angels and saints, and you, my brothers and sisters, to pray for me to the Lord. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Chelsea's day, oh, Spiritus, in glory 
Let us pray. Almighty and merciful God, graciously keep from us all adversity, so that unhindered in mind and body alike, we may pursue in freedom of heart the things that are yours. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God forever and ever. Amen. A reading from the first book of Kings. In those days, Elijah the prophet went to Zarephath. As he arrived at the entrance of the city, a widow was gathering sticks there. He called out to her, please bring me a cupful of water to drink. She left to get it and he called out after her, please bring along a bit of bread. She answered, as the Lord your God lives, I have nothing baked. There is only a handful of flour in my jar and a little oil in my jug. Just now, as I was collecting a couple of sticks to go in and prepare something for myself and my son, when we have eaten it, we shall die. Elijah said to her, Do not be afraid. Go and do as you propose, but first make me a little cake and bring it to me. Then you can prepare something for yourself and your son. For the Lord, the God of Israel, says, The jar of flour shall not go empty, nor the jug of oil run dry, until the day when the Lord sends rain upon the earth. She left and did as Elijah had said. She was able to eat for a year, and he and her son as well. The jar of flour did not go empty, nor the jug of oil run dry, as the Lord had foretold through Elijah. The word of the Lord. A reading from the letter to the Hebrews. Christ did not enter into a sanctuary made by hands, a copy of the true one, but heaven itself, that he might now appear before God on our behalf. Not that he might offer himself repeatedly as the high priest enters each year into the sanctuary with blood that is not his own. If that were so, he would have to suffer repeatedly from the foundation of the world. But now, once for all, he has appeared at the end of the ages to take away sin by his sacrifice. Just as it is appointed that human beings die once, and after this, the judgment, so also Christ, offered once to take away the sins of many, will appear a second time, not to take away sin, but to bring salvation to those who eagerly await him. The word of the Lord. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. 
Spirit, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. Alleluia, alleluia, alleluia. The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Mark. In the course of his teaching, Jesus said to the crowds, Beware of the scribes who like to go around in long robes and accept greetings in marketplaces, seats of honor in synagogues, in place of honor at banquets. They devour the houses of widows and as a pretext recite lengthy prayers. They will receive a very severe condemnation. He sat down opposite the treasury and observed how the crowd put money into the treasury. Many rich people put in large sums. A poor widow also came and put in two small coins worth a few cents. Calling his disciples to himself, he said to them, Amen, I say to you, this poor widow put in more than all the other contributors to the treasury. For they have all contributed from their surplus wealth, but she, from her poverty, has contributed all she had, her whole livelihood. The Gospel of the Lord. In our gospel today, Jesus warns about the wrongful use of religious authority. As we heard Jesus say, beware the scribes who like to go around in long robes and accept greetings in marketplaces, seats of honor in synagogues and places of honor at banquets. They devour the houses of widows and as a pretext recite lengthy prayers, they receive a very severe condemnation. And at first when I read that, I was kind of worried that Jesus might be talking about me go around in long robes you know, seats of honor, you know, and uh, place of honor at the table here uh, at the altar and greetings in marketplaces. But then I realized that Jesus was talking about seats of honor in a synagogue, which we're not in, so I'm free from, uh, from that danger, you know, that he's talking about me. But Jesus uh, den denounces the scribes, religious persons of his day, and he gives three warnings against them. He says, the things that are problems are their, their desire for prominence, for, for places of honor rather than lowly places of service. Also, he condemns the desire for deference and recognition, you know, seeking esteem from others rather than seeking to promote, to promote the good of others through the humble self-service and the care of others. And thirdly, we hear him talking about the attempt to, uh, to increase one's position and use that position as a position of self personal gain or uh, self advancement you know true religion is related relating rightly to god and to one's neighbor in love honor and respect you know the lord puts his holy spirit within us that we may live his spirit of joy in his presence joy in true worship joy in self service you know in the giving of ourselves to others out of love you know true reverence for god frees our heart to give generously to god and to our neighbor. And to make kind of help his disciples understand this, use the example of this poor widow who comes forth to give to the temple treasury. And as he as we hear, she gave all she had. You know, and the, the message seems to be love doesn't calculate. Love gives generously. And Jesus praised this poor widow who gave the smallest of coins in contrast to the rich people who gave much greater quantities. How could she give more than them? Of course, percentage-wise, she did. You can give, can't give more than 100%, no matter what sports say, about 110%. But you can only give 100%. She gave it all, you know. And she did that because her heart was in the right place, you know. And love is more precious than gold. She gave something more important than the, the gifts that they gave in the temple. Jesus taught the real meaning of giving comes from the heart. And like I said, the widow's heart was in the right place, and her gift was a reflection of her heart. You know, the others gave from their surplus, you know, not from their essence and not from their hearts in the same way. Uh, we also see in our first reading a, a precursor of that, which church always gives us our first reading at Sunday Mass, and talks about this wid widow of Zarephath. Uh, it was during a time of great famine. Matter of fact, uh, Jezebel was the wife of King Ahab and it was just uh, really wreaking havoc and uh, bringing about pagan worship and all this other stuff. And so God was punishing them with the famine. And Elijah said it will not rain until he said so, which was going to end up being three and a half years. They're two and a half years into this drought, and the widow is preparing her final meal for herself and her son before they die. 
you know, so Elijah comes to the house and he says, you know, make, you know, could you bring me some water and some bread, you know, and mentions cake at the end there, probably some sweetened bread. And uh, the widow explains the situation and Elijah says, no, that's not going to happen. You know, that God will provide for you. And she gave him and her and her son, they ate not only then, but as we heard, the jug of oil did not run dry, nor the thing of flour go empty for a year until the, until the famine was, uh, was alleviated. You know, it's not always easy to use authority and power properly. Uh, John Lord Acton, famous British historian, famously said, power tends to corrupt and absolute power corrupts absolutely. You know, the more power we have, the easier it is to use it for our own, our own selfishness, our own self-gain and our own advancement. You know, the scribes whom Jesus issued this warning gave service to God, but it wasn't from their hearts, it wasn't from the right reason, nor with the right result. You know, it was for show. It was for their own honor. It was own advancement and benefit. As we hear, it says that they used their positions to devour the houses of widows. And then Jesus' judgment, they will receive a severe condemnation. You know, Jesus gives us the ultimate example, of course, of the proper use of authority. He who is God, who has authority over heaven and earth, came down to this earth, took on a human nature to serve us. You know, Jesus had even less than these widows had. He had nothing in, this earth, in the earthly sense. In his reckless love for us, for mankind, he came to give us, to give everything away. You know, he gave his church to Peter. He gave his mother to John at the foot of the cross and really to the whole church through him. He let the soldiers take his last garment, you know, his cloak. And in the end, he gave the only thing he had left, his body and blood on the cross. So he gave everything because his heart was so pure and so loving that he gave everything to us. And in fact, that's what we celebrate each Mass. As we heard in our second reading, Jesus does not offer himself repeatedly as the high priest enters each year into the sanctuary with blood not his own. You know, he said he offered himself once to take away the sins of many. So his one sacrifice on the cross, though, is we celebrate that, and it makes it present. We renew that sacrifice. He, ought, he suffered once and all for sin, and he rose from the dead, and is now seated at the right hand of the Father is free of suffering but we celebrate his sacrifice. It's extended through time, this celebration, so that we can encounter our Lord's body and blood, so we can receive that, and that we can embody that in our own lives. So what should we, what should we give in return for this great gift that we're going to receive of Jesus' body and blood? We have to really return that gift with a gift like that, a gift of ourselves to God. And he wants our body and blood. He wants our deeds. He wants our hearts. He wants our thoughts, our desires, you know, our actions to coincide with his love for us. You know, all of, the, all of us have authority in different ways. I mentioned before, you know, in the family and government and workplaces and sports and TV and movies, in our community, among relatives, friends, acquaintances, classmates. You know, in all those instances, we exercise a moral authority. And we need to know that Jesus, when he's talking about this use of authority, even by those who are high up, you know, as scribes, He's talking to all of us. How do we use the authority and the gifts that God has given us? I have authority over everything in my house, everything that I own. You know, how do I use that authority over these things? Uh, John Adams, our second president of the United States, said, because power corrupts, society's demands for moral authority and character increase as the importance of position increases. So there's certainly an increase in authority in, in the different positions of power, but that really calls for greater character you know, in the use of that authority, you know, especially when it's over more and more people and more and more important things. But that's why especially we need to pray for our Pope and the bishops of the church and even priests and deacons and, you know, to whom much is given, much is expected, and much will be required on Judgment Day. You know, and right now we, the leaders of the church, have much to answer for, you know, and living our lives according to God's will and also being instruments of that to the church and through the church to the world. So by God's grace, you know, power is called to be used for service, for good, you know, for advancement of God's kingdom, you know, as Jesus teaches and models so frequently all through his life, of course. And so we need his help, you know, especially as like I said, priests, bishops, deacons, to, uh, to realize that that truth needs to reside in our minds and hearts and, and that we must use that to serve God and his church constantly. And then so be prepared. Like I said, when God calls us to accountability, we face God you know, for the use of this, uh, the graces and gifts he has given us.
So let us all pray, especially for ourselves, that each of us in our different areas of life may use our, our gifts, like I said, as Jesus did it with his heart, the heart of the good shepherd, to care for his sheep, to love God, to glorify God, and to be an instrument of truth and love to our neighbors. I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all things visible and invisible. I believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, born of the Father before all ages, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten of made, consubstantial with the Father, through him all things were made, for us men and for us The Lord hears the prayers of the lowly. Let us pray for our needs with sincerity and humility of heart. Give wisdom, courage, and wise judgment to Pope Francis and all our bishops. Help them to serve Christ and his flock as good shepherds. Infuse them with every grace and virtue to lead the church in the way of salvation. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For all who serve in public office, especially those recently elected, make them persons of integrity, honesty, and virtue in the service of the common good. Inspire them with the respect for the dignity of every person, especially those most vulnerable. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. In the evils of abortion, euthanasia, and infanticide in our nation and our world, and for all who work in a pro-life apostolate, that they may not lose heart, but may give witness to the value of each human life from the moment of conception until natural death, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For world peace and the safety and success of our military, our first responders and law enforcement, and for an end to terrorism and the speedy release of our citizens and collaborators from Afghanistan, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For those discerning clerical and religious vocations, may God lead them to understand his holy will for their lives and give them courage to follow him wherever he leads, especially our parishioners, Zach Halloran, Brother Augustine Mukachi, and Greg Liker. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For the prompt and worldwide distribution of safe, moral, and effective treatments for the coronavirus and its variants, and for the consolation and healing of all who are sick, especially those listed in our bulletin and in our parish prayer book. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For all the prayers which we hold deep within each of our hearts, known only to God, and for eternal rest, light, and peace for the souls of the faithful departed, especially those whose names are at the foot of our altar. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. Heavenly Father, give us faith to see all things in the context of eternity. As you value the widow's might, help us to realize that it is the sacrifice, not the size, that matters most to you. And grant us all our needs as we ask them in faith through Christ our Lord. to your word, so that 
Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the bread we offer you, fruit to the earth and work of human hands. It will become for us the bread of life. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the wine we offer you, fruit to the vine and work of human hands, it will become our spiritual drink. Pray, brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. You may the Lord accept the sacrifice of your hands for the praise and glory of his name, for our good and good of all of his holy church. Look with favor, we pray, O Lord, upon the sacrificial gifts offered here, in celebrating in mystery the passion of your Son, we may honor it with loving devotion through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. We lift up the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. <clears throat> it is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God. For you so love the world that in your mercy you sent us the Redeemer to live like us in all things but sin, so that you might love in us what you loved in your Son by whose obedience we have been restored to those gifts of yours that by sinning we had lost in disobedience. 
And so, Lord, with all the angels and saints, we too give you thanks as an exaltation we acclaim. To you, therefore, most merciful Father, we make humble prayer and petition through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, that you accept and bless these gifts, these offerings, these holy and unblemished sacrifices, which we offer you firstly for your holy Catholic Church. Be pleased to grant her peace, to guard, unite, and govern her throughout the whole world, together with your servant, Francis, our Pope, and Thomas, our Bishop, and all those who, holding to the truth, hand on the Catholic and apostolic faith. Remember, Lord, your servants. And all gathered here whose faith and devotion are known to you, for them we offer you the sacrifice of praise or the offer for themselves and all who are dear to them for the redemption of their souls in hope of health and well-being and paying their homage to you, the eternal God, living and true. In communion with those whose memory we venerate, especially the glorious ever-Virgin Mary, Mother of our God and Lord Jesus Christ, and blessed Joseph, her spouse, your blessed apostles and martyrs, Peter and Paul, Andrew, James, John, Thomas, James, Philip, Bartholomew, Matthew, Simon, and Jude, Linus, Cletus, Clement, Sixtus, Cornelius, Cyprian, Lawrence, Chrysogonus, John and Paul, Cosmos and Damien, and all your saints. We ask that through their merits and prayers and all things we may be defended by your protecting help. Therefore, Lord, we pray, graciously accept this oblation of our service, that of your whole family, order our days in your peace, and command that we be delivered from eternal damnation and counted among the flock of those you have chosen. Be pleased, O God, we pray, to bless, acknowledge, and approve this offering in every respect, make it spiritual and acceptable, that it may become for us the body and blood of your most beloved Son, our Lord Jesus Christ. On the day before he was to suffer, he took bread in his holy and venerable hands, and with eyes raised to heaven, to O God, his Almighty Father, giving you thanks, he said the blessing, broke the bread, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took this precious chalice in his holy and venerable hands, and once more giving you thanks, he said the blessing and gave the chalice to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. <clears throat> Mysterium Fidei, Mortem Tuum, Annunciabum Domine, Et Tuum Resurrectione Confitemur, Domine Venia. 
Therefore, O Lord, as we celebrate the memorial of the blessed passion, the resurrection from the dead, and the glorious ascension into heaven of Christ, your Son, our Lord, we, your servants and your holy people, offer to your glorious majesty from the gifts that you have given us, this pure victim, this holy victim, this spotless victim, the, the holy bread of eternal life and the chalice of everlasting salvation. Be pleased to look upon these offerings with a serene and kindly countenance and to accept them as once you are pleased to accept the gifts of your servant, Abel, the just, the sacrifice of Abraham, our father in faith, and the offering of your high priest, Melchizedek, a holy sacrifice, a spotless victim. In humble prayer, we ask you, almighty God, command that these gifts be borne by the hands of your holy angel to your altar on high in the sight of your divine majesty, so that all of us who through this participation at the altar receive the most holy body and blood of your son may be filled with every grace and heavenly blessing. Remember also, Lord, your servants who have gone before us with the sign of faith and rest in the sleep of peace. Grant them, O Lord, we pray, and all who sleep in Christ, a place of refreshment, light, and peace. To us also, your servants, who, though sinners, hope in your abundant mercies, graciously grant some share and fellowship with your holy apostles and martyrs, with John the Baptist, Stephen, Matthias, Barnabas, Ignatius, Alexander, Marcellinus, Peter, Felicity, Perpetua, Agatha, Lucy, Agnes, Cecilia, Anastasia, and all your saints. Admit us, we beseech you, into their company, not weighing our merits, but granting us your pardon through Christ our Lord, through whom you continue to make all these good things, O Lord. You sanctify them, fill them with life, bless them, and bestow them upon us. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. At the Savior's command and for my divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from the evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not in our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. And with your spirit. Let us offer each other the sign of peace.
Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy of that you should enter my house, but only say the word.
Let us pray. Nourished by this sacred gift, O Lord, we give you thanks and beseech your mercy that by the pouring forth of your spirit, the grace of integrity may endure in those your heavenly power has entered through Christ our Lord. Amen. Please see for a few announcements and our second collection, the first Sunday of the month, always for our building and maintenance fund. And as the ushers do that, I'll make the announcements. If you haven't done so yet and you'd like to, the yellow cards in the back are uh, for your deceased loved ones, and they'll be put in the, you can put them in the collection or leave them back there, give them to me. We'll put them in the front of the altar for our uh, praying for the deceased loved ones during this month of November, the, the month of the poor souls. Uh, the Knights Columbus will be selling tickets in O'Connor Hall to the inaugural Frank Meliano Spaghetti Dinner and Silent Auction, which is tonight at 6 o'clock. Kind of have mixed emotions about you buying tickets, because yesterday I tasted the uh, sausage and the meatballs and they were so good, I'd like more leftovers, so maybe think twice about going to that, because it is going to be delicious tonight. Uh, the Hispanic Ministry will be selling tickets, uh, also in O'Connor Hall, for a raffle they're doing, and the Lady St. Joseph, uh, the cake selling, and orders for those will be there also. The Knights Columbus will hold a food drive next Monday, a week from tomorrow, from 9 o'clock to 4 o'clock, in the uh, right in front of the Family Life Center. That goes toward the Atauga Interfaith Care Center. Uh, and they help distribute food to those who are in need in our area. The Box of Joy are due today. Uh, pretty, just deliver them to O'Connor Hall after this Mass if you have them, or if not, uh, maybe talk to them and see if time to bring them. The gift shop will be open today also, and today, the first Sunday of the month, we have coffee and donuts in our O'Connor Hall across the way. So we'll also take the bulletin with all the other announcements, things going on this week uh, in the parish. Uh, especially RCIA this week on Wednesday night at 7 o'clock. We start a new segment. It's going to be on the liturgy and the sacraments. So really just important to understand what we do while we come together, what we're doing at Mass, and uh, all the sacraments that God gives us His grace through. So if you're interested in learning more about that, even as a Catholic, please uh, feel free to join us on Wednesday night at 7 o'clock. Let us stand. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. May Almighty God bless you, the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Go in peace, glorifying the Lord by your life. Thanks be to God. Thy water and the word from that he came and saw and to be told he brought with his own blood he bought and for her life he died. Elect from every nation. Yet one more.
sun, one Lord, one faith, one birth, one holy name she blesseth, four days, one holy food, and to one Lord she presseth with every grace in you. Victor and tribulation, and to mold of her war, she waits the consolation of these forevermore, till with the bitch and glorious, her long in life are blessed. And the great church victorious shall be the church at rest. Yet she on earth hath union with God the free in one, and this sweet communion with those who rest in one. Oh, happy ones and holy, Lord, give us grace and lead. 